upcycling is one of the hottest crazes around, and it just makes good sense, too. Finding, I'm sorry, finding value in something that's no longer being used takes a little bit of creativity, and this guy sure has that. He does. Our photojournalist, Mike Radford, introduces us now to an artist who is breathing new life into old seatbelts. I'm making a large messenger bag. I've got all the parts cut. I've already designed the bag. These are all the parts. We got this is for the buckles. This is the gusset, and I got the straps and the body. And uh, this is sort of the downhill side of the whole process. I studied fiber arts at the Appalachian Center for Craft in Smithville, Tennessee, and. As I was there, I uh, was trying to decide what I wanted to use the textiles for, and fabric is on furniture. So after I, I left the craft center, I started apprenticing at upholstery shops, and part of learning how to reupholster furniture is using an industrial sewing machine, just like this. So all my material is locally harvested from junkyards around Middle Tennessee, and I actually go to the junkyards and go through each car individually cut out the seat belts, cut out the buckles, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty labor-intensive process. So here's a, a, a little display of a variety of the items I have. Uh, starting on the, the small, smaller items, I have these zippered pouches right here. It's like a little coin pouch. It's got a zipper. It's got a little wristlet that's removable. 13-inch. Uh, computer. I use a MacBook Air in this and it fits really well. Um, you see the diversity of colors here. There's the Cadillac buckle, the GM buckle, the GM, and there's Ford. So those are the only three buckles that were metal. It shows when people see these bags hanging up, they walk, I don't put anything on the outside of my booth that say seat belts. I might hang a few seat belts off the edge so people can see just the seat belts uh, by themselves rolled up. But people see the bags from a distance and they think, that looks neat, I wanna go check that out because they like the way it looks. And then they look at it and if I watch them, they'll see the buckle and then they're, you see they're thinking about it and then their jaw drops and they're like, oh my gosh, this thing's made out of seat belts. This is seat belts after the laundromat. Some of them are light faded from the sun. This is a woven style slip seat chair, which a whole dining room set could be done this way. This is a new little little project I made. Uh, this is a little camp stool. So it's pretty small, but it'll actually hold a lot of weight. And it's actually really neat, these buckles, since they go back to a, to a time when I was a child in the 80s. Um, when in the back seat in the middle of the summer in the south, we would burn our arm on them because they'd be so hot that we'd hide them in the back seat in the crack of the seat and they'd be lost for 30 years because back in the 80s, back seat and seat belts, you didn't, you, you could pass on the seat belts. Um, seat belt laws weren't really uh, instructed, uh, enforced that much back then. Well, I just want them to be uh, really uh, happy about what they bought. Um, I want them to be able to be excited about what they have and be proud of it, uh, enjoy the comments they get. Um, it's great to have, to be reassured that something you invest in and spend money, you're, you'll well earn money on that will last. Uh, that's not, not so common sometimes today to find things that'll last long enough to, to really get the, the money you pay for out of them. That's awesome. It really is, and just uh, the, the, the care that he's put into that, but they, they look nice, they look very nice. That's awesome. Uh -huh. You can find him at Salvage Goods TN online. He also has an Etsy shop, um, and he's going to be at the craft fair this weekend at Centennial Park, too, so I hope you'll look him up. I like your line about the Cadillac bags, though. Yeah, I wonder if they cost more. They <laughs> might. <laughs> cool.